how's it going everyone? Eddie Martinez here with The Recording Connection and welcome to your supplemental video for lesson number 18, drum and guitar miking techniques. Go ahead and grab a piece of paper and we'll get started. Okay guys, so we're about to cover three topics in this video, so remember to take plenty of notes. Let's go ahead and start by titling our notes at the very top of the page, lesson number 18 notes, and go ahead and put three bullet points on your page, maybe around three or four lines apart, which is a good enough space for each topic. So first thing we're going to go ahead and talk about uh, bullet point one would be miking a guitar, okay? Bullet point number two would be miking a guitar amp. And then bullet point number three would be miking a drum set. All right then guys, before we actually get started, I want to go ahead and give you a quick little disclaimer. I want to let you know that these techniques that I'm about to share with you are just a starting point for, you know, miking these particular instruments. Of course, you always want to work with different microphones and different, you know, microphone pattern types, uh, depending on what type of style and sound that you really want to achieve. Okay, so knowing that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, so what we're going to go ahead and talk about right now is miking a guitar, and not just any guitar, an acoustic guitar. So I want you to go ahead and take a good look at this pitch right here, and imagine different places where you can place a microphone to pick up sound. Okay, now one of the other things you should be thinking about is, what type of microphone should I be using and what pattern type I should be using? So in this case, you want to go ahead and use a dynamic microphone with a unidirectional pattern type. All right, guys, so right now we're going to go ahead and talk about three things. We're going to be talking about microphone placement, the type of sound produced due to that microphone placement, and of course the benefit. So the first mic placement technique we're going to talk about is placing a microphone around eight inches from the sound hole. Now, the type of sound produced from this is a very low end, very bassy sound. It's a really good, here's the benefit, it's a really good uh, starting place when you have sound leakage problems, okay? Now, another technique that you could use, it, it works pretty much the same, is placing a microphone around three inches from that sound hole, and what you're gonna get is a very bassy, again, very boomy and full sound. Again, this is really good for isolation. You're probably gonna get a little bit more low end on this one, and uh, it's gonna sound very full. Now, another technique that you could try is placing a microphone around four to eight inches from the bridge. Now, what you get from this technique is a very woody and warm and mellow type of sound. Again, the benefit would be that you're gonna be picking up less string noise and less picking sounds and things like that. So you could definitely reduce some of those noises by placing a microphone around four to eight inches from the bridge. So the last technique we're going to talk about in regards to miking a acoustic guitar is using a miniature microphone clipped to the outside of a sound hole. Now this is actually a more popular these days and what you get when you actually place your microphone, you know, your mini mic there, is that you get a more natural, well-balanced and bright sound as well. Uh, so this is really good for isolation. Uh, you're going to pick up less ambient noises and essentially you're going to get the real richness of the inside of that guitar. All right, guys, let's go ahead and talk about our next topic, which is going to be miking an amplifier. So we're going to do it again in this type of fashion where we talk about the microphone placement, the type of sound that it produces, and then the benefit. We're not really going to go over so much what pattern type to use, but more so on what type of microphone to use for these recordings. And you should really use either a condenser microphone or a dynamic microphone when you're miking a guitar amp. All right, so let's go ahead and go over some guitar amp miking techniques. Now, the first technique we're going to go over is placing a microphone four inches from the grill cloth at the center of the speaker cone. Now when you do this what you get is a very natural and well-balanced tone and its benefit is that it's really good for isolation. Now the next technique that we'll go over is actually very similar to the first one except that it's a bit closer. You're going to go ahead and place that microphone one inch from the grill cloth at the center of the speaker of the cone and what you get from this is a very different result. It's going to be very bassy and you're going to get a much fuller low end tone. Now the benefit of this is that it actually minimizes feedback and leakage. Now the last technique that I'll share with you is very basic as well. All you need to do is place that microphone around three feet from the center of the speaker of that cone. Now what you get is again a very different result. It's going to be very thin sounding and it's going to actually reduce the bass and kind of increase a little bit more of that high-end sound. So this is really great if you want to pick up some of that room ambience, and it's also really good for recording leads. 
All right, guys, let's go ahead and talk about miking a drum. So there's a lot of different techniques to use. In fact, the way we're going to do this is we're going to go ahead and talk about how to mic each part of the drum. Now, in regards to what type of microphone to use and what type of pattern type to use, uh, you really want to audition different microphones and different uh, microphone pattern types to achieve the type of sound that you're looking for. So let's go ahead and start with the kick drum. All right, guys, so when you're recording a kick drum, the mic should actually be placed either in the drum or in very close proximity to the drum, usually around one to six inches facing the beater head. So it's a very simple uh, technique to use. Uh, this way you get a lot of that low end sound. It's also very punchy. Okay, now when you're recording a snare drum, typically the drum is mic'd at the top of the head of that uh, drum and at the edge of the drum. Uh, usually gonna wanna use a cardioid or a super cardioid microphone. Now when you're recording hi-hats, the mic should actually be within four inches to the cymbals, which usually is a really good starting point. Uh, you're gonna get a lot of that snap and sizzle, uh, and you're gonna get a lot of that crisp sound that you're gonna be looking for out of the hi-hats. Now when you're recording the toms, the best thing to do is to go ahead and use a pair of microphones. Uh, usually individual microphones uh, will work better. You're going to place these at the top of the head near the edge. The same way that you would do for a snare, just uh, you would position these ones the same way but on each tom. And this would be great so that you can go ahead and create a little bit of spatial imaging uh, with the finished result. Now another simpler way of doing this is if you only have one microphone, you could place this in the center of both of these. Uh, toms so you can kind of pick up both uh, toms at the same time. Now when you're miking overheads, you know, both of your overhead uh, cymbals, the best thing to do is to go ahead and use, again, uh, two microphones. Uh, you would use usually a condenser microphone. This will give an accurate reproduction of those sounds. And of course, uh, again, you would want to use two microphones of the same type. You want to make sure that they sound identical. So those were the most common ways of recording an acoustic guitar, a guitar amplifier, and a drum set. All right, guys, that's all the lesson detail I have for you for right now. But of course, there's plenty more videos coming along in the future, so look out for those. And remember to always try to find more information about your lessons online. And while you're online, don't forget to check out Music is My Oxygen for all the things that you care about in the world of music. And until next time, have fun, study hard, and keep your eyes on your goals. I'll catch you guys on the next video.